if you recall we started this chapter with the the lorentz force right so we assumed there is already <coughs> we we said that the 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 magnetic force is q v cross b right so we started it with force right <coughs> but it was not such a such a strange thing to do because when we uh, started our electrostatics we again started it with force force right we did not start it with field mm -hmm. we said if there are two charges this is the force that they experience then we came over to define the field and then we defined what the field will be due to a charge so it, it is almost going on the same lines that we, we we said that there exists a field how that field came into being that was not discussed by us okay but but one would also like to know obviously this is a vector one would also like to know more what the how the field is produced right and we know that the magnetic field is produced due to a current carrying wire or, or or to the heart of it there should be a current element right so 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 we should say that that a current element a current element produces a magnetic field because this is this is what we said at the start of the chapter we have seen the manifestation of the magnetic field in an electromagnet or 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 say when we when we passed current through a wire and kept the iron filings around it 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 kind of got arranged in the circular fashion so it is indeed a current that must be producing the magnetic field that is then <coughs> that is definitely true but then we would like to know the quantity the exact relation okay this is subjectivity saying that yes it is the the magnetic the current element that produces a magnetic field right we would like to know how much okay or, or or how is it dependent what are the factors on which it depends so let us say i have a current carrying wire of any random shape right say something like that okay and we would like to find out we'd like to find out the magnetic field at this point right at this point now obviously the field is the field is a a a, a vector thing right it's it's a, it's a vector the field is a vector right now there is there is a current say i flowing in this wire right we also know by by our current you know the the iron filing experiment that the that the current produces the magnetic field by the right hand rule that we have already stated right that if your if your thumb points in the direction of if your thumb points in the direction of the 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 conventional current then then right if if thumb points in the direction of the conventional current then then my fingers the fingers of my right hand they curl around the direction of the magnetic field right so i also have a sense that maybe due to this 
the field will be will be if I, if I if I if I put my fingers here if I if I put my thumb right hand thumb here and and try to curl the fingers they'll curl curl into the screen and then out of it right try doing that so so I also have a sense that the field here will be kind of that okay directed downward fine now <clears throat> this this relation between the current here with the orientations and the distance for finding out the magnetic field here is known as biot severed law this is called biot severed law okay so it in fact it in fact let's try to understand and it's very very important it relates it kind of relates the cause to the effect the cause is a current element and the effect is a magnetic field so it it kind of relates the cause to effect okay it if you if you tell it the cause it will tell you the effect the magnitude of the magnetic field for a given orientation and magnitude of current with respect to a point where where with respect to the point where you want to find out the magnetic field right so so it is <coughs> by Sivert law gives you the magnetic field due to a current element magnetic field due to a current element okay Due to the current element. Fine. Now it is found that <coughs> that 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 infinitesimal field here. Right. I designate this as a vector. The vector that starts from the tail of a small current element right the tail of a small current element this is this is the element right this is the element so so it's something like that right a very small length of, of wire okay and we call it ideal right ideal so so we find that that the field here the infinitesimal field at that point that is directly proportional to i okay it is it is It is directly proportional to the length of the element. It is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Okay, and and it is directly proportional to 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 the sine theta okay okay and also that it is directed in the downward direction right and it is a vector so so what happens we say that d b is directly proportional to i i give the the vector notation to dl for the reasons that we have already explained current cannot be taken as a vector because it does not does not satisfy the triangle law of addition okay if you go to class 11th and you look at the definition of vectors it says that vectors are the quantities which have magnitude as well as direction vectors are those with 
magnitude as well as direction and apart from that it must must follow the the triangle law of addition that is it's is included in the definition okay so it may have a magnitude it may have a direction but if it does not follow this then it will not be considered a vector okay fine <clears throat> so we see that if if we want this this direction of db to be downward then then and the sin theta tells me that there is a cross product relationship right <clears throat> this angle is theta so there is a cross product kind of thing so between ideal cross i'll have to write r cap because, because there is no r term appearing in the in the numerator right so ideal cross r upon r square right and when this this sign goes away the proportional sign goes away the constant of proportionality that kicks in is mu not upon 4 pi dl cross r cap upon r cube the unit of this field is tesla which is denoted by this okay and we have already elaborated on that one tesla is also one weber per meter square weber this is this is weber right there is one weber per meter square and there is another unit that we use one gauss one gauss is 10 to the power minus 4 tesla correct Sin theta. Yes. Sir, I was supposed to write sin theta also. I was supposed to write. See, what happened was this dB became I dL sin theta upon R square. When you crossed it, when you when you did the cross product, that sin theta comes into play, isn't it? Okay. A cross B is what? Mod A mod B sin theta. So if if I take the modulus of this. Okay, mod wise, it was that. If I take modulus of this, this is mod dl, which is dl, mod r cap, which is one. So it does not figure out here, right? And into sine theta. Theta is the angle between them. So it is mu uh, naught upon four pi have a different uh, value. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, mu naught upon four pi, mu naught upon four pi is is an innocent looking 10 to the power minus 7 minus 7 meters 10 to the power minus 7 meters that will depend on on this right this is tesla right so it will be it will be tesla meter square and and there is a meter here so it is tesla meter correct right? Tesla meter ampere per ampere, right? It will be, it will be Tesla meter per ampere, right? <coughs> There is an R square here. I have written an R cube, right? And so there is an I also. R square. And, and there is an i also yes so so this is r square and and you do have an i here right so this is your byard servert law this is your byard servert law if by any chance you put an r here right so instead of this 
if you put an r so so db becomes mu not upon 4 pi into i dl cross r upon rq okay tesla yes there will be an r cube if this is r okay because because you know that r cap can also be written as r by r so if you substitute this by r by r then then you will find this to be that right so 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 this is what it is so okay is that okay now this has got important repercussions but before we go into that before we go into that let us try to try to look at the characteristics of the characteristics of the magnetic field field in comparison to the with respect to the electric field okay let's see that how do they compare what are the similarities what are the differences right so the first thing is that both are long range forces both are long range forces and what do you mean by long range forces They are over long distances. Over long distances. That's great. Like gravitational force. Like what? Gravitational force. They are like action at a distance. That is what is you know. That means they do not require a medium for them to manifest. That is there, right? But what do you mean by long range forces? Constant and long distance. That means they are not short range. What does that mean? which actually means that there are short range forces okay which are strong forces intermolecular which come yeah no inter inter not intermolecular forces right they are inter inter subatomic forces right when when the subatomic particles start coming in the range of a femtometer the short range forces kick in so they are not those right they are long range fine so so in that context they call it a long range force right they are long range forces both are long range forces and 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 both have both have 1 upon r square dependence is it not Oh, I didn't get. Is it is it called the inverse spiral? They both. Yeah, inverse spiral. Yeah, yeah. That is that is what is inverse spiral. Inverse spiral. Of. All right. So this is known as the inverse spiral. Inverse spiral law is that uh, anything the gravitational law is uh, inverse spiral law. Anything that depends on the oh, inverse of the. Uh, square of the distance that is inverse square law right and um, amazingly all the forces they they follow the inverse square law right so whether it be gravitational or electrostatic or magnetic okay <clears throat> now the the principle of superposition applies to both 
the the principle of the principle of superposition the principle of superposition the principle of superposition applies to both to 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 both mu not is called the permeability of vacuum in the similar manner that you had seen the per permittivity in the electrostatic forces here we have a permeability so if there is any other medium you will have a mu r right a relative permeability that will get multiplied to it so 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 uh, so so if if you are mu r is the relative permeability permeability this is the relative permeability so if you are using any other medium right if you are using any medium then uh, any medium that then instead of mu naught you will be using this right and for for vacuum this is 1 mu r is equal to 1 for vacuum just like here vacuum so yeah it's just like the permittivity epsilon r that you had already seen right it's exactly that fine now the, the principle of superposition applies to both okay now what does that mean the principle of superposition applies to both means when one of the sources is acting it acts as if others are not present right so when one of the forces one of the sources acts it acts as if the others are not present as if the others are not present okay that is that is one and and the resultant is the sum of the individuals right and the resultant is the sum of the individual forces Okay. Also the, the, the magnetic field, magnetic and electric field are linearly dependent on their causes. Right, magnetic and ma magnetic and electric fields. Are linearly dependent. Linearly dependent on their causes right that is the the current element the current element and the charge respectively right what does that mean that that magnetic field is directly proportional to ideal linearly right it is not like ideal square similarly the electric field is directly proportional to q 
it's, it's not dependent on Q square, right? So if you if you double the charge, you get double the electric field. Had it not been linearly dependent, it would have become four times, right? So so that is what is linear dependence. Now there are certain differences as well. So so the electric field electric field is created by electric field is created by a scalar source called charge or charge right while the magnetic field is while the magnetic field is produced by by the vector source ideal Do we see that? Okay. And the other one is absolutely natural. What is that? The magnetic field at a distance depends on the orientation. depends on the orientation depends on the orientation on the orientation what, what do we mean by that it depends on on the angle so so let us try to see come back here if if it is here it is something else keeping the keeping the distance same if you start changing this let's try to see here the angle starts becoming lesser and the field is smaller right so there is an angle dependence between the two between the two fields right both are long range both are long range you should call right they may induce a force or they are they are just they are like fields so <clears throat> on the orientation of the r vector right while if, if you look at the charge and try to find out the field all around it you must have seen that the field is that the field is not dependent on the orientation there's nothing like an angle right that's that's a major difference so you'll find a, a, a great thing about it is that and, and that we should we should understand let me, let me make some make some space so if if there is a current element like that okay and and you are trying to find out so so if there is a current element like that right and you are trying to find out the the field here okay and, and say the current is like that okay then what happens then what happens all the current elements okay all the current elements say like that they make an angle of zero degree right so so with respect to this the angle between R and IDL is what? This is IDL. This is R. What is the angle? Zero. 
and this will remain so for all the current elements so even for a current element here right the angle is the angle is gain zero so gain zero you see so and it's that for all so the contribution of all the elements is nothing but zero so so here head on going head on with the with the wire the the magnetic field there is zero and, and so does it happen for any point that is for, for any point that is that is somewhere here okay for all points here here as well for all points here as well the the angle that r vector makes okay the angle that the r vector makes is 180 degrees no because now the r vector is like that your dl vector is like that so this is the angle right this angle is 180 degrees and sine 180 always yields you zero okay so so it is indeed that while while if you had been the same distance here while if you had been the same distance here let's say here the field would not have been zero correct or even even a, even at a farther distance the field would not have been zero say even here say even here the field would not have been zero right so even here the field would not have been zero but but here the field is zero right so it indeed depends on the orientation of the of the point with respect to the to the source that is the current element right <coughs> There is another major difference which is if, 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 you, if you remember the electrostatic fields, right, there, there, there used to be a charge and the field say at this point, at this point will be radially outward, right. If, if, if it was a negative charge, then the field at this point will be radially inward something like that okay something like that i i may erase this okay i may erase this so the, so the field was either radially outward or inward correct in the radial direction here it is perpendicular to the plane in which ideal is there right perpendicular to the plane containing i dl and r okay so electric fields this is the fifth one so the electric fields are either radially outward or either radially outward or inward right they are either radially outward or inward but magnetic fields magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of to the perpendicular to the perpendicular to the plane containing ideal and 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 r right it's perpendicular to the to the element itself Now there is an interesting connection between the permeability that we have studied. So, so mu naught into epsilon naught. Okay. What is mu naught? Mu naught as we saw was 4 pi. Mu naught by 4 pi was mu naught upon 4 pi is 10 to the power minus 
minus 7, right? Minus 7. I'm sorry. Minus 7. So, so mu naught is, is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. We also know that 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9, right? So, so epsilon naught is equal to 1 upon 4 pi into 9 into 10 to the power 9, right? So, so I multiply that by this, so it, I get 1 upon 4 pi into 9 into 10 to the power 9, right? Now, what is that equal to? The, the 4 pi cancels 4 pi and we get we get 1 upon 9 into 10 to the power 16 10 to the power 16 and what is that it is 1 upon c square is it not this is 1 upon c square which sees the speed of light c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second okay and somehow it was this that set the speed of the electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves are the propagation of the electric field and the magnetic field which reinforce each other as they travel okay and when you solve the equation for that that's why the speed came out to be the speed of light and it was only later that it was known that light itself is an electromagnetic wave. So that's how the optics, optics and electricity and magnetism, they came together into one. Right? So, so, so this is that. So, so we can say that one upon root over mu naught, epsilon naught is equal to C. Fine.